Hi everyone. Um, a week ago I finished my third to a Te Waipu Namu. Um, actually the only person to have finished the event three times. Uh, finished in five days, 22 hours, which was good enough to earn me eighth place, which I'm pretty stoked about. Uh, it's been nice seeing a bit of a progression each time I've done the race and um, this latest edition I finished uh, getting on for a day faster than last time. Just a little bit more about my background. I've been mountain biking for a long time. Um, bike packing since before it was called bike packing. And uh, I've done a lot of cycle touring, including cycling from Alaska to Patagonia. So I thought I'd make this little film today just to talk about um, the equipment that I used in CTW this time around. Um, I thought people might be interested in what a third time finisher uses. Um, so moving right along, um, helmet, um, basic lighting with a um, LED lens, a um, MH10 head torch. This is the 18650 battery standard, and that's the same battery that I use in my handlebar light and also in my power bank. So it's good having a universal battery system there. Um, sun guard sunglasses, Valen sunglasses, which have a um, polychromic, polychromatic lens. Um, that's awesome for changing brightness in different cycling conditions. Um, shoes wise, I use the. Um, a 510 trail cross, Adidas trail cross, um, sticky rubber soles, um, awesome with my flat pedals. Uh, these are a completely synthet synthetic shoe and really fast drying, which is great. Um, on to pack, um, I used this uh, Ultimate Directions um, Adventure Vest, it's called, and uh, with a hydration, two litre hydration bladder, um, which along with a small bottle of ample water supply for the roof because uh, there's generally plenty of groundwater and um, occasional water that needs to be treated but I'll talk about that later. Um, headphones in a pocket, um, sunblock and then uh, in this pocket here I have painkillers, uh, chamois cream, um, anti-flam um, and then pocket inside has um, toothbrush, toothpaste, um, meds, that sort of stuff. And then um, inside the main compartment, this is great because I could load it all up with food to keep weight off the bike for the hard hiker bike sections. Um, so I've got my first aid kit, um, spare K-tape for my Kelly's, um, dry bags, tiny pack towel for cleaning cleaning face and bum at the end of the day, toolkit. Just going into the toolkit in more detail. Uh, inside the kind of core things are, um, are the wolf tooth end case uh, multi-tool which fits everything that I need on the bike including um, uh, valve core remover, torques, allen keys, all that, um, as well as being able to remove pedals and chain breaker and um, tubeless tyre plug. Uh, and then the wolf tooth um, pack pliers um, with spare links and uh, that also doubles the tyre lever. And then I've got a, a tiny wee little um, uh, set of pliers um, for various different pieces along with scissors. Um, actually never really needed any of that stuff much which, which was great. Uh, tire lever, super glue, um, patches for tubalito spare tubes and then in here I've got like a, um, a bit of chain link, um, a valve adapter, spare valve core, um, brake pads uh, and a fibre fix for broken spikes as well as a sewing kit for sewing up split tyres. Uh, and then getting into clothing, what you've got on the bench here, just um, I rode in just a basic um, Tonelli um, cycling roadie style jersey, which is great for having pockets and fast drying and everything. And then um, bibs, my favourite Otso bibs, super comfy with pockets on the sides. Uh, just a real basic gore vest, um, excellent for keeping the chest warm and hyper breathable, packs down to absolutely nothing, super comfy. 
and always good having an extra windproof layer on the chest. And then um, when it gets a bit colder, instead of having a windproof shell, I use this Kathmandu top, which has got a gore um, and finium uh, fabric on the chest, which is windproof, chest and shoulders. But then it's um, like a micro fleece on the back and arms, so it's acts as a mid layer underneath the shell, basically, when conditions get a bit grim. Uh, and then sun sleeves for the arms. So I basically never ride with bare arms in the sunshine during the day because I don't want to get skin cancer and your arms get fried in New Zealand. And then in the evening when it was warm, I just rolled them down to my wrists. I basically didn't take them off my arms for about four days. Um, usually slept in them as well. Super comfortable. Um, and then these pock gloves were awesome. Um, they are uh, super anatomically cut, they fit really, really well, and they've got really nice big nose wipers on them, and breathable palms with um, lots of holes, so hands didn't get too hot, and they're, they're still good for operating the phone. So moving along to the bicycle, uh, I'll talk about the rest of my gear, and then I'll talk about the bike itself. Uh, so seat bag here, uh, Revelate Designs bag, it's, um, this contains my storm gear, and my spare tubes. I had two Tuvalido spare tubes, neither of which I had to use, and I've not needed to use tubes in either of the other events too. I've been pretty lucky with punctures. Um, so, just popping this open. Um, inside, I've got the Showa uh, Temres uh, 28202 gloves, which are awesome, uh, breathable, waterproof, relatively cheap, fleece lined. Um, Super good when it's um, freezing cold but dry conditions and also really awesome in wet and wind. Um, highly recommended. Best gloves I've ever used for this sort of thing. Um, then a uh, Kathmandu um, Gore-Tex uh, Shrake, Shrake Dry Jacket. Um, basically the best thing ever for bike pack racing. Um, fabric doesn't wet out so you don't end up cycling in a real soggy wet jacket that's heavy to carry later on. Saturated fabric tends to cool a lot in the wind too and because this fabric doesn't wet out you tend to stay warmer for longer in wet conditions. Uh, overpants, these are three quarter overpants, um, just basic Kathmandu ones that were cut down. Uh, and then I've got my fleecy knee warmers. Uh, I don't carry any long johns or leggings or anything, these are, these are it, and my spare tubes. So frame bag, um, I've got my um, squeeze filter, I uh, actually use this a fair bit. I keep it in a little bag because they do get punctured easily as I found out the hard way. Um, then other spare clothes, basically just like, um, this is an OR, um, Windproof hat, um, not much insulation, but the windproofing is just awesome when it's cold and wet, and it fits super nicely under a helmet. Uh, and then uh, just a basic buff, merino buff. Uh, toilet paper, um, cycling cap, um, great for keeping the sun off my head when I'm um, taking my helmet off for hiker bike. Uh, Spare sealant, um, I always carry this. In my opinion, it's more useful than having a spare tube if you're running tubeless. Um, cable ties. Uh, and then this is essentially my electronics. So, uh, double dry bagged, of course. Uh, so we've got a, a Nightcore power bank here that takes two... 18650 batteries uh, and then I've got another three spare 18650s phone cable um, a couple of different charging plugs now as it turned out in this event uh, my batteries lasted really really well I only did about 40 minutes of charging and um, so I actually only needed this this time around I wouldn't have bothered with this had I known that uh, and then other requisite cables for charging multiple things at once. Um, quite a heavy little kit, but it's 
that works for me. Uh, and then top tube bag, um, which is a Revel 8 mag tank. I've got um, Panadol Extra, Panadine, and um, Nodos and water purifi purification tablets. Um, electrolytes, uh, lip balm, uh, and my spork, which I use for eating like um, cold mashed potato, which is what I have for dinner uh, with tuna usually, because um, it's lighter and quicker than using freeze dried meals, and also for eating muesli. Um, then uh, I've got chain lube, uh, Biomax uh, bicycle bio lubricant, uh, my toothbrush for cleaning chain, and um, a rag, just a little bit of old micro uh, microfiber towel for cleaning the chain. Um, saddle cover for my um, cell anatomical leather saddle, otherwise they get wrecked in the rain. On the bar itself, uh, I've got a Garmin E-Trex 22X, uh, which I use for recording the route as well as following the route GPX. Uh, and then a Phoenix UC35 head torch, uh, which as mentioned before, 18650 battery, um, real easy. Then uh, for, for tracking, um, I've got a Garmin Messenger here inside a plastic bag. Um, once charged, it lasted the entire route. I still had about 30% battery left, although I usually turned it off while I was sleeping. So sleep kit uh, and other bits and pieces. Um, this is a bit of 4mm uh, EVA foam, or closed cell foam I should say. Uh, it was all I needed. Um, I've done 8 hour sleeps on this in training, so if you're only doing 2 or 3 hour sleeps in the race, um, it's plenty. because. I tend to fall asleep pretty easily when I'm exhausted um, and I never wake up uncomfortable and it is good having a bit of insulation from the ground and it weighs literally just about nothing. So this is the new style of pronghorn bag that Revel 8 Designs are using now which is a super nice fabric, it's really easy to roll up, um, it's waterproof and um, generally has a nice handle so we've got a um, a Mac pack um, helium fleece top. Um, these things are super amazing. Ultra compressible, ultra warm, um, but good for kind of regulating your temperature too. I actually rode in this for the last uh, 24 hours or so without overheating underneath my Kathmandu windproof. Um, sleep shorts. I don't know if I'd bother with these again. I actually only wore them once, but like they're quite good if you've washed your chamois during the day in a creek and then you want to have something to wear while you're walking. Um, spare socks. Uh, Sol Escape Bivy Bag. This was awesome. Um, it only weighs 240 grams. It's breathable. Uh, silver reflective on the inside. It's kind of a Tyvek style fabric. Um, just a short zip. If the forecast was worse for Tuatei Waipunamu than it was, I'd use a proper bivy bag such as an OI Helium. But given the relatively um, reasonable weather we had most of the time, this thing was perfect. Highly recommended. Um, and then I've got a Big Agnes um, sleep quilt. Um, quilts are just brilliant for good bang for buck in terms of insulation. And um, I've used this in two editions of TTW now and never needed any more. Finally, um, Big Agnes Down jacket. Again, a super light compressible jacket. This was great insulation, but I think in future I would use a synthetic jacket in TTW just for the fact that um, conditions in New Zealand when they're stormy uh, tend to be really, really wet. And you want something, I think, ideally that you can wear underneath your shell if you have to. Uh, so finally, onto the bicycle. Uh, this is a Otto Cycles Fenrir stainless. Um, in many ways, felt like the perfect bike for me for Tuatha Waipunamu. Um, it's got a relaxed enough head angle that it's comfortable and confidence-inspiring for the 
abrupt steep drops that you get on the single track and some of the um, more uh, rougher, more technical off-road sections of the race. Uh, a great seat angle for climbing, for long sustained climbs, which are kind of part and parcel of to a Tewaipu Namu. Um, so with the Sid Ultimate Fork, 120mm travel, um, pretty regular sun ring lay rims, um, nothing super fancy, but um, they've done a lot of riding now and there's no, no cracks or anything in them, they're still going strong. Mezcal 2.35 inch tyres, which are pretty much the Tuatei Waipu Nomu standard. Uh, Wolf Tooth um, waveform flat pedals. Um, these pedals come in two sizes. I use the smaller size for the race because they give you a bit more clearance for tight technical single track riding and um, a bit more clearance in rocks and that sort of stuff. And um, they work perfectly. And they're the ones with the longer spikes, which were good for grip. 28 tooth chain ring. Um, that's my go-to for this race and also for heavily loaded overseas touring. Um, I did all my training on a 30 but then put the 28 on for the race. And then a Shimano 10 to 51 cassette which was awesome. Uh, and then I've got uh, Magura brakes on here, just a regular um, two pot on the back um, and a four pot on the front which um, I, is, I wouldn't have it, have it any other way. I like going downhill fast and um, having decent braking and a 180mm rotor on the front is the way forward for me. Fox transfer dropper post. Um, I used a rigid post with a quick release in the first two editions of the race and then uh, became convinced that a dropper was the way forward. Uh, and It just gives you more flow and more confidence on technical sections and then on the big downhills. Um, you can drop your seat, get more aerodynamic, even on the even on paved roads. Uh, so it's kind of a win-win all the way around. I think having a dropper post probably saves you more time in TTW than having um, than having aero bars, personally. Then um, handlebars, just a regular race face next carbon bar um, with real comfy ergon grips. These are good for not getting not getting numb hands and comfortable to the comfortable wrist position as well. And finally, uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, if you've got any questions, um, just hit me up in the comments. Cheers.